Hello, we're going to see today how to input a production planning problem in Excel. Here's the model. We are planning for four months. So for each month, we're going to have a production quantity that we're looking for. I'm calling these here on the right hand side, the letter P, P1 through P4, how much to make in each of the four months. If we make too much, uh, more than the demand for each month, so the demand for each month is given here in row four, how many units of the product you're going to sell. That's your forecast. If you make too much in a month, there will be inventory, which is the amount that you don't sell, which you want to carry forward to the next month and uh, hopefully sell it later. These are going to be my I variables that I have reserved the space for them in Excel here in row six. So I have eight variables, four production quantities and four, four inventory quantities. In the story of this problem, they say that you initially begin with 5,000 units of your product. And you want to go through these four months, satisfying demand and ending with no inventory. Um, the production costs they give you in the story are in dollars here, 12, 14, 15, 16. They change month to month. And the inventory cost, the cost to hold one unit from one month to the next, uh, they say it was 10% of the monthly production cost. So this is here for us in row 11. So in the objective, we have minimize production costs times production variables plus inventory costs times inventory variables. Um, your factory has a production capacity per month, happens to be 20,000 units. And your, let's say, warehouse where you hold the goods also has a capacity here in row 14, so 10,000 units you can hold from month to month. That means in the math, each of your P variables is at most 20,000, each of your I variables at most 10,000, again with the exception of the last one, which is zero. The last thing we have to do in terms of the math is to basically create the connection between production, sales, and inventory. And this goes along the lines of this idea that I have here in column A, row 8. It is what I had my, uh, plus what I made in a given month minus what I sold. That will be my inventory. So in month 1, I had 5,000. I made this quantity P1. I sell 10,000. What's left is my inventory I1. Then this inventory carries forward to the next month, month 2, and it becomes the what I had part of month 2. I make more. I sell. I have new inventory, and I go on like that. And this expression here on the left-hand side of this equality is what I call had plus made minus sold, and I would like to create it here in Excel, and for example, for the first month in cell C8. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, what I had in the month before is here, right? 50, uh, 5,000. Plus what I make in month one is variable P1 minus what I sell is the demand of that month. Okay, had plus made minus sell. As you can see, if I copy this formula to the right, I will get the equivalent formulas for the remaining months. So for example, I can show you here, it's looking back. So in the month, in month four, what I had is inventory of month three plus what I made minus what I sold. Okay, um, so this deals with that formula. The capacities of inventory and production, we can input them directly inside the solver window, so we don't need formulas for those. The formulas we need now are production cost and inventory cost. Well, production cost is production variables times uh, their corresponding cost, so that's a sum product. Right? We take the row of P variables, comma, the row of production costs. Okay, let me show that to you one more time. So 12P1, 14P2, etc. And if you notice, because of the layout here, if I copy this formula one row downward, I'm going to move this blue block down to the I variables and the green block down to the inventory cost. So it will give me for free the equivalent expression for the inventory costs. And to get the total cost, I could simply sum these two quantities. If you did not care about having them split like this into this breakdown of production and inventory, you could also have written a single 
total cost formula using a sum product that multiplies this gray rectangle of variables with this you know two by four uh, rectangle here with all the costs at the same time okay so now we're ready to go into solver let's go there and let me open this here so first thing it asks you is where is the objective cell that's our total cost c18 this is a minimized problem so click min and the next part is who are the variables the numbers you're looking for these are the ones that I highlighted in gray so I can select this whole block here okay so c18 is the objective minimize the variables are from c5 through f6 okay for constraints we're going to do the following we're gonna say I want to impose my capacities notice that the p and i variables are all together and the P and I capacities are also together in the corresponding positions, which means I could do all of this in one shot. I can say, hey, solver, I need these eight values to be less than or equal to these eight values over here. And it does them cell-wise, less than or equal to. One detail that I just realized I forgot to mention is, and let me get out of Solver for a second. Remember that we want to end with inventory equal to zero in the fourth month. So to accomplish that, I can go here and say the inventory capacity of the fourth month is zero. And in doing so, it's not going to let me do anything there. Let me go back to Solver. Then um, the only other thing I have to do here is to impose these for um, constraints here which basically say the had plus made minus sold the left part equals the inventory right so let's do that I'm gonna click add to add one more constraint and say well the all my had plus made minus sold quantities should equal my inventory well my inventory is in row 6 C6 through F6. Click OK. Remember to check the box that says variable should be non-negative here and use the solving method for linear programming in Black LP. Now I think we can just click solve for this. And there we go. Let's take a look. <clears throat> we spent $870,000 producing 19,500 carrying goods. You can think of the carrying cost as the uh, opportunity cost of having, for example, your money tied up in the form of a good as opposed to being used for something else that could be making you money. Or you could also think of it as the literal cost of having to perhaps rent some space or pay for that space for you to store the goods. The total cost is $889,500. How are you producing? So I had 5000 sitting around. In month one, I had 10000 to sell. So I made 15,000. 15 plus 5 is 20. So when I sell 10, I am left with 10. These 10 carry forward. Next month, my demand expected is uh, 15,000. So I make 5,000 because I already had 10. And I sell everything and I have no inventory. Next month, I uh, expected to sell 15,000. I made more. I made 20,000. So I had a leftover of 5,000. That I combine with next month's production, which I also go all the way to maximum capacity of 20. 20 plus 5 gives me the 25,000 that I have to sell, and I end with zero inventory. Notice one little detail. Even though production costs are going up month to month, you can see here that your production actually is greater later on, even though the costs are greater later on to produce. The reason being that this inventory cost here is not negligible. In this case, it's actually high enough to the point that it still pays off to pay a little more to produce so that you don't have to carry so much. Were these inventory cost numbers to be a little smaller, you might see yourself producing more earlier on and carrying more to avoid the problem of production being more costly later uh, in the planning horizon. So that's it for the production planning problem. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and that it's useful for you to do other kinds of production planning problems. And uh, thank you for watching.